Welcome to Adult Education and Family Literacy Week and the Command Center, hosted by the Coalition on Adult Basic Education. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Command Center here in Washington, D.C. We are live for AEFL Week uh, activities and so on. We do apologize for a little bit of a delay there, but we are so excited to have our next guest, uh, Lisa Castaneda. She is joining us uh, live, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring her in so that you can see her. Hello, Lisa. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Oh, doing great. Thank you so much for joining us here on AEFL Week, and uh, we really do appreciate your participation and are just really looking forward to hearing a little bit about you. So could you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your role in adult education? Okay, so um, I am a site director at Close Open College, it's community college, um, and our main campus is in Beeville, Texas, but I am in Alice, Texas. So um, my role is um, mostly just the, the community relations part of adult education. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much. And so let, let me ask you this. Um, tell us a little bit, if you would, uh, tell us a little bit about your personal story and your personal educational journey. Yes, I've always been very transparent when it comes to my story and who I am and how I got to be where I am. So I do have a doctoral education, uh, a doctoral degree in adult higher education. Um, and before I got my doctoral degree. I had a master's degree in psychology and in sociology and a bachelor's degree also in psychology. But leading up to um, how I got here is I did come from a background with a GED. So um, I dropped out of high school at 16. Um, I was married and had a child. By the time I was 19, I had two children. So um, I was working at Walmart and from working at Walmart, um, I just didn't know where to go, what my next step would be. And that's when I just saw a commercial for a community college and I mustered up enough courage to come in, walk in the doors and I took the steps to, um, to take my GED and to um, enroll into some office automation classes because at the time I thought I really wanted to be a secretary. And from there, I took my first social science class, which was psychology. And that's when everything just like <laughs> was like a whirlwind for me, changed my major in psychology and I just never stopped. Well, that is just great. And congratulations on your, your persistence and uh, um, all that you have, have done and, and for sharing your story. We really appreciate that. And it is inspirational. So let me ask you this. Um, going back to uh, your work in, in the adult education field, tell us why, um, why you're excited about your work. Oh, gosh, I'm excited just because of my story and who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I came into a community college and I enrolled in classes, I was told that I can do a work study program. Mm -hmm. And from there, I was like, oh, what work study? What exactly is that? So I started out in work study um, back in 2003. And from 2003 until today, I never left the campus. So um, it, it, it's just something that um, gives me pleasure to speak to other students that maybe might have the same um, background that I did, mm -hmm. um, just to let them know that um, there is a way out of any kind of circumstance, you just have to have the motivation to do it. Right, right, yes, definitely. And so I think that's that's really something that uh, that excitement, you know, to share mm -hmm. with uh, learners and prospective learners, uh, I think is definitely uh, a very positive thing. And thank you so much for, for being a role model as well. So mm -hmm. let me ask you this, what are you hoping um, to achieve or hoping to see through Adult Education and Family Literacy Week this year? Gosh, I'm just hoping to see people um, take initiative to actually love um, learning. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a classroom semester type learning, mm -hmm. but just some kind of skill that can um, take you through the next level, next phase. I always tell my kids, because um, I have adult kids now, I was like, gosh, if I could do it all over again, I would go into some kind of hands-on skill where I, after one, two years of, of getting the skill, I can go straight to work and be highly marketable. Mm -hmm. um, I chose the education route, which is longer to get to the, <laughs> to where I wanted to be. I don't regret it, um, but there are other avenues to take rather than sitting in um, a classroom and just getting, just having lectures, writing papers. There, there's just so much more to offer. Um, when it comes to higher education, adult education, mm -hmm. 
And it's just mustering up that confidence to walk into the building and ask the right questions. Right. Absolutely. And I think that that's what really important, being empowered and having that confidence to ask those questions. Yes. So let me ask you this then. It probably dovetails right into this. Uh, what message would you like to share with adult learners and adult educators across the country? Um, I guess I would like to share gosh, the fact that higher education or adult education in general, when um, you don't have the the support or the background, it's very intimidating. Mm -hmm. And just to help help people feel welcome and and feel like they are a part of the community and what we have to offer. Right, right. Yeah, that's a great message. And so let me ask you this, looking at legislators, looking at those, the lawmakers and the decision makers, you know, if there's one thing that legislators should know about adult education, what would that be? Um, that it's not a one size fits all type model. Um, we have to really talk to our students and understand what their needs are and go from there. And I, I, I would say that it, uh, adult education when you're coming in and you don't have that support system mm -hmm. it is very very intimidating and um, sometimes we don't feel like we're welcomed because the education system is is catered towards the high school um, traditional student right. and we don't feel like we have a place to go mm -hmm. so it's not a one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. and it's just going down and, and asking um, people that are needing these certain types of skills to go into the workplace or to to go on to higher education, um, what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds great. Well, look, Lisa, thank you so much for You're taking welcome. the time to share a little bit about your story uh, and uh, really to serve as as a role model and an inspiration, not only in Texas, but, but across the country. Thank you so much for taking yeah, the time to join us, and uh, we wish you well. Thank you so much. You have a good day. Thank you. You too.